The situation on the job market for programmers is quite difficult nowadays, and I know quite a lot of people, even with several years of experience, who struggle to find new job. This is why by the end of this video I will show you how you need to change your mindset and what exactly you need to learn in order to get a job as a senior developer, because this is exactly the level of the jobs which is needed nowadays. It's not a secret that it is really difficult to start working as a junior. This is understandable because with the AI it is really simple to start coding. But a lot of middle developers also have problems. Even after several years of experience, they are struggling to find new job. Why it happens? From my perspective, because previously we had an IT bubble where all companies put a lot of money in IT, which means they were hiring non-stop people, even with not the best knowledge, and they were not cutting costs. Nowadays it is completely different, after corona and economical situation in the world, most companies are cutting their costs, which actually means they only hire new programmers when they need to. And mostly it is only senior level developers. Why is that? Because they don't need a lot of guidance, like juniors or middle developers, and they are quite experienced to do a lot of stuff as a single person. And if you are a middle developer who knows, for example, only Angular as a framework with some JavaScript and a bit of TypeScript language, you might think, okay, I know enough to get a new job, but then you have a problem. Because as most companies need seniors now, it is difficult to sell yourself as a senior if you are just a coder. What I mean by that? For a senior, it is not enough to just write code and close tickets. Sure, you need your technical knowledge, but this is only one piece of the puzzle. If we are talking about Angular here, you need to know on a good level the whole Angular ecosystem to make good decisions as a senior developer. It is more about planning architecture, understanding the future impact of your choices on the project and how this project will scale in the future with your changes. So on the interview nowadays, it is not only about years of experience. Sure, if you have like two or three years of experience, at least people understand that you worked in some companies and you know how to code. So they expect you to know how to work with state management, like in GRX for example, how to create your services and components in React, and how to work with API. But it is not enough. And actually most interviewers can understand if you are a senior or not with your first answer. If they are asking you to know how you will implement a certain feature, the senior will always start with fully understanding the goal and with hearing what constraints we have. Because senior must know the risks and when some information is missing, the solution might be wrong. This is why on the interview you must show that you are thinking as a senior developer. You must understand the problem fully to solve it for the business, not just to code your solution. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior bootcamp, where we are not only learning senior knowledge, but also prepared to pass all these difficult senior interviews. When we are talking about senior developer in Angular, it is all about understanding the trade-offs. There is no silver bullet solution which will be the best in every scenario. Typically, you need to weight your pros and cons of the certain solution to understand if it is worth it. So you always need to think first, do we really need this new library when you want to add it? How will it help? Will it improve readability, simplify your code, or will it need a lot of maintenance and updating later? And you must understand that it is always better to select tools which are popular on the market than some niche tools that you like yourself. Like for example, we are talking about Angular, the most popular solution for state management, which is wildly used in all teams and companies, will be NGRX. So it makes a lot of sense to build the whole state management in your project with it. It will be easier to find new developers who are familiar with your technology, and you can for sure say that it is bulletproof and scalable, because a lot of other companies are using it successfully. Or if for example you see that there is no organization or shareable libraries of Angular between different teams in your company, you can propose a really good solution, like for example Enix. It is also a stable and bulletproof solution, which allows a lot of different teams to collaborate together in a strict way and share libraries across the whole company. 
So you should not be focused only on writing code, you need to be focused on architecture, scalability, readability and performance of specific code. Another important point for senior is to go for the correct scenario. When you want to implement the feature, you typically have several ways to implement it. And typically, in my experience, I have like a fast variant and a long variant. And before I really often implemented the fast variant, because I wanted to just finish my feature in several hours. But after some time, I always see that the fast variant is bad, because it cuts corners and it is not a long-term solution. This is why if you feel that one solution would be great long term and another solution is just a patch for several days, then it doesn't make sense to go for the fast solution, it is better to always implement long term solution. One more thing for senior developers when they are talking to PO is not to use a lot of coding terms. Product owners don't really care about dependency injection, detect changes and all other programming stuff. You need to always describe it to them, so it is understandable what you are doing and what you are trying to achieve in terms which they will understand even without programming knowledge. It is better to use words like development time, maintenance cost, readability, than naming some complex patterns or solutions. Another important point that on the senior level you are required to lead people, not on the paper but just by a role. As a senior developer you will review code of other people, you will help and guide middle developers and if you are doing that then management will see that you are a knowledgeable person and you can get more money easier. Another point is that your argumentation should always be crystal clear. When the person is coming to the new company and he's saying to another devs, your framework is bad, I don't really like it, we need to use React instead of Angular, it is faster or better, it doesn't sound like a person is a senior. Every single tool has its own pros and cons. If tool was selected in the company, there were some reasons to select exactly that. And new person likely doesn't know this reason. And simply say that you want to replace one framework to another or one library to another without clear reason or advantages doesn't show that you are a senior developer. Another thing for a senior developer is they must understand patterns and algorithms on a good level. It is just expected for them on the interview. So when you prepare for the senior interview, you need to know at least most popular patterns in your language. Like for example in JavaScript it would be singleton, factory, publish, subscribe, adapter, dependency injection if we are talking about Angular and so on. And you need to be able to show your algorithmic knowledge, because it is expected that you can optimize performance in some solution to make it faster. It doesn't really mean that you need to solve all algorithms by heart, but at least you need to understand the complexity and time of different solutions and why one solution can be better than another solution. And this is actually what we are also doing in my middle to senior bootcamp. So if you are serious about becoming a senior developer and getting a better job, check the link to the bootcamp under the video.